What I'm making. So. Sure. And honestly, 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 it I'm inspired by whatever. Sure. Like now, I play these chords. I could have started Randomly. with the beat. Yeah, sure. You know? So now, now I'm hearing strings. It's okay. It's you know what I mean? Yeah. Let's record it and then we have it. Your understanding of music, obviously you're in the dance space. Mm. Your understanding way background, yeah, in music, like the strict discipline of jazz. Yeah, you're not Caesar. You're not Caesar. You're but I won't lie to you. Ever since I started doing dance music, I try to unlearn most of the things that I've learned about jazz, because because uh, jazz is a very technical craft. Too technical? Not too technical. Like technical as in, if you're playing in a key, there's scales that are relative to the key. Sure. You know, so you first apply technique and then you apply emotion. Sure. I learned good to go dance music, you start with the emotion. If it doesn't make you feel good, you don't do it. Stop. Yeah, well, yeah. Yeah. So like whatever you put, if you're putting drums, the drums have to make you feel good. You have to be able to dance to it. Sure. So there's more emotion involved. And that's why half the time there's fewer notes in dance music. Yeah, there's, and, uh, there's, there's a general yeah, chord progression. So it's like really number exactly. four, three or four. And it stays there. And it stays so that's because it morphs, you know, like the production things like bass, sub, kick. Yeah. All of those things contribute to the emotion. Sure. If but you, you start with the emotion and you work your way into the technical. Into the technical. So me and I'm trying to marry the two worlds because I have a strong jazz background. Mm -hmm. I'm saying why can't I play progressions like this? This is 87. Why can't I put this at 122? too fast for this tempo. So then I'll go in and change the melody. So sure. I let the music create itself. Sure. So no, 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 it's too fast. Like it needs to make, it needs to sit nice for me. So you'd have less going on. Exactly. So now I'd have to go and change the melody. Then I decide, okay, what sort of, what, I, I want a kick drum, but what, what sort of kick drum do I want? Do I want something heavy? Do I want something light? Do I want something heavy too? I make those decisions in my head. You don't have to do it. I promise you, bro, you'll have the most fun. Because I let the music create itself. I mean, I don't, sometimes I don't go to the studio with a plan. I have no plan. I just come to the studio like, okay, so what's with all that? So I put a kick drum now. So when you, when, as it Suk went, or does it, is it dependent on who you're in studio with? Yes, I won't lie. Most of the time I'm alone, but if I'm featuring an artist, then I research a lot about the artist before. If I knew you were coming, I'd research about all the things that you do, all the things you listen to, all the things you play. And then we can With or without my knowledge? Without your knowledge. Okay. So who has been? To feel say, this is dope. It sounds like something I can do. Of course it sounds like something I can do, because I've done my research. Find the key because also, especially with singers, it's important to know their the vocal range. Yeah, well, so I find the songs that they sing. I did a song a long time a couple of weeks ago. So I went to listen to Abo, Kanyani, and Jerusalem, and there's, uh, there's one of Moby Dixon, and there's one, there's some of her own, yeah, well, that she's released. And then I found that there's a general place that she sings around. Mm. Sits comfortable. So now I created something in that space. Yeah. 
So when you get a kick, I have a kick. But sometimes I'm not inspired by a kick that's four on the floor. So I'll start doing funny things. I like my phrases in two bars. Most people will do this. It's a one bar phrase. Mm -hmm. I mean, I like my phrases in two bars. So. It only changes at the end. Sure. Okay, and then I put that in a session. Then I just go away. Go have a drink. You know? Like, and then I'll go away and then I'll leave it. So already, I'm going to say, I'm going to do it. It's too fast. Uh -huh. So I'll take it off. Heavy, do I wanna make it light? If I make it heavy, then it's more drums. Light, I can just leave the kick, play bass live, add a little bit of uh, secondary melody and the vocal. Let's talk about the number of instruments or was what done. In terms of the number of instruments that I play, I play keys obviously, I play bass guitar, I play guitars and a little bit of drums, but I don't, I don't want to be that guy who's a jack of all trades. Like I play the things that matter to me. Like keys, very big on harmony. I like my singers to come in and really like, you know. So I'm very strong on the keys, and obviously my main instrument is bass guitar. But obviously, I mean, I bass guitar is very unconventionally. So I play a lot of bass lines, but I also play lots of melodies on the bass guitar. Play lots of chords. If you listen to that song I produced with Mondly. He come with me, black coffee is come with me. I'm playing I'm playing more I'm playing more more I'm playing more chords. I'm playing more chords than I am playing uh, melodies. Mm. I hope I have it here somewhere. That's you on the guitar? Bass guitar. It's a bass guitar. But the way I'm playing it, the way I'm playing it sounds like it's a normal, a, it like a like normal a guitar. Yeah. Yeah. So that's that's what I'm about. I like to just push the boundaries a little bit. How can we change the game? How can we pioneer something new? Yeah, well. Showcase. So that's what I'm about. So mainly it's bass guitar and keys. Sure. You know? Would you say keys are like the cornerstone? Would you treat them? Would you consider them the cornerstone of, of uh, not necessarily keys in themselves, but just the understanding of basic harmony. Sure. You know, the chord progressions. Because sometimes you don't have to play full chords. You can just play a bass line mm. and still hear where the song is going with mm. just the bass line. Mm. There's no chords, there's no pads, there's no piano, there's no nothing. Mm. So it's not necessarily a, a, a keys thing, but mm. it's a, just a basic understanding of a harmony, uh, uh, chord progressions, melody, and how they place, how they sit. Uh, in relation to each other. So Muntalale Manji, are you saying to them there's no rules? I am saying that we are allowed to bend the rules and half the time that's when most magical things happen when you do bend the rules. Mm -hmm. You know? But but let's still respect the craft. Like one thing that really really frustrates me, for example, is DJs who mix a cappellas that are off key. That are off key. <laughs> I go mad, you know. Sure. Their argument would be, no, the crowd doesn't notice or doesn't. We do, bro. We're sitting there and we do. So I feel like it's in the, it's in, it's in your best interest as a DJ to take the acapella, find out what song they're from, check out the key of that song, find a song that is in the same key as that song. Mm. Or if you a bit of a nerd like me, take the acapella and put it in the key of the song you want to drop it on top of. Because sometimes you're not You can go to the software and change the key to match the song that you want to play. So you're killing two birds with one stone. So I'd say that although that bending the rules sometimes, it's also really cool to just like know oh, it's okay, this a cappella cannot sit on this. It's off key. Showcase. Sure if you can tell a girl or a guy that they're singing off key, 
means that you can hear that they sing of key. Why would you drop an a cappella on something that's not the same? So, um, yeah, well, how how important was it for when you were as in the music school? Mm. You were educated then, yeah. Mm. So when you were there, did you envision yourself being in, in this world? Not at all. Firstly, I was never into music. Music was not my interest. Mm -hmm. A lot of people don't know this. I mean, I, I went to a trade school and I studied electronics. I wanted to be electrical engineer. So I was building amps and building alarm systems. That's what I wanted to do. So I'm like the true epitome of a calling where this is what you want, but music is like, no, I don't care about what you want. This is where you belong. So it kept sucking me in. I kept finding myself going, like interested in people who play, uh, people who I don't get the time, I don't have the equipment, I don't have any of that. But eventually, I landed myself at the music school. I am going to get at you of this place. This is the place that I want to be. And obviously through the medium of jazz, you get so hooked up into the art form, like just the fact that you, you, you create and you improvise on the spot and it's unrehearsed and it just happens, mm -hmm. you know? So I was so fascinated with that that I would have never imagined it in the beginning and the dance. What do you miss most about it, it, following the discipline in that way? I won't say that discipline because mm -hmm. even within that space, guys, I would say, Niggas into the zenzi, zenzi of food. But what do you miss the most about that environment? <sighs> to be honest, it's full circle. I've had so much ups and downs that I honestly don't miss it. Mm. I don't miss it. One of the one of the reasons I say that is because with with jazz, it's so involving. Like it takes away so much of yourself because. You put out everything, you put out, you can, okay, you can never play four jazz sets in one night. Because that one gig that you play will take out everything that you have, your whole emotion, your thought process, you go into new worlds, you really exert yourself in that moment that you have nothing left after that. Yeah, well, so I feel like it's a choice that one has to make. These people who are so happy with that, and I'm happy that they are happy with that, you know. But I feel like if I can contribute to different people at different times, sometimes on the same day, then I should be able to do that. I should be able to do four, five, six shows in one night and still make everybody happy. Whereas Gala, if I play that one show and I really dug in, then I was I was done for the day. I was finished. Yeah, Energy is you know it's finished. It's finished. It's finished. You have to really, really, really I mean it's it's like I say, it's an art form, it's a special art form and there are people who are happy in that space yeah. and I respect that. You know? Talk about the difference between being a musician and being a record producer. Okay. Well it's a very it's a very important question because lots of people who make beats, for example think that they're record producers or not we give them the props of being record producers because someone who let it be it and then everybody else comes in and contributes and records and records and records and records we will always say this is the song by Prince Bulo produced by DJ Lab you know where in essence DJ Lab was the beat maker in the process you still need someone to put the personnel together. You still need someone to actually put the vocals together with the music and produce the song and make a record from it. Not just getting a beat and saying produced by. You know what I'm saying? So my transition, my transition was a gradual one. I'm not where I want to be, you know, but I'm definitely not where I used to be. So it was a gradual transition to say, look, now I have to understand it. It's not just about keys. It's not about the beat. You can have a dope beat that goes nowhere. You know, it's putting together the people, Abazotula. It's being able to match them, Nakon. Like you can't just put random people together just because they were here. You know, do they complement each other? Uh, do they resonate? Uh, does it resonate with you? Do you think that people will enjoy the combination? In a corner foot, it's like two worlds. You can either say, well, I hope people like it, or 
Let me teach people something new. Let me put a Maskande artist with a Gom artist. They've never seen that. Let me introduce it to them. And people will be like, wow, okay, we didn't expect this, but it's actually a cool combo. Let's keep it going. Let's find a, a hip hop guy doing rap. Like now, I'm working on a piece of music with with the beast. I'm working on a piece of music with the beast where I just want beast to rap, but over like hardcore dance music, you know? So there's no singing. There's no, it's just rap and dance. You know, so just to just to test the boundaries and 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 yeah. Well, so I think at some point in your gradual movement and your transition into that, you feel like okay, this is my voice, but I also want to teach people because this is what I want. This is what I understand. Obviously, Pella, you're not gonna always be sharing something new because you still have to keep the people that follow you and make them know that this is your son. Okay. So my born as time goes on. Okay, cool. Let's talk to Umuntu, who's hearing Zonka, Lizard, Tizu, Sharp, all the fantastic things that you've done, the names that you're mentioning, people you've done stuff with, from mm. Black Coffee mm. to a Morning Mobile to a Beast, etc. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Um, Ufunu Pal, they're looking at all your achievements and accolades as Mkans under that is untenable. Yeah, well, Kampe, the fire is there, but they overthink it. Let's start them off with basics of getting thoughts like, Mm. in the form of something that Abanga was with father on the USB mm. let's start with basics mm. of getting that process going and getting lessons into time what do they need from the start let's think about the first time you put a set a setup together is in Dawaba Nazo is as the elementary as I was to get you to to get your thoughts down look I am a very 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 passionate believer and respecter of time. Like, if everybody could understand that everything takes time, it will make their learning process much easier. Yeah, well, Rome wasn't built in one day. Certainly, you're not gonna be able to have an established career overnight. Yeah, well, so, even from young guys who say that Bafuno Genaga music, it really needs to be like more than a passion, you know? Because I know people who are passionate about music but don't have the talent for it. Mm. It needs to match. Like you can't you can't say you like no muto itanda in Tongobanaki uya itanda. But maybe like like when I finished high school, I didn't have money to go study a university. Yeah. So whatever the case may be at what's against the music it's not really in them they have their reasons for doing it and I'm and maybe a passion but it's not passion I truly have had experiences where people but by all time the music but they just don't have the talent for it and it's really frustrating to, to work with people who don't have the talent like okay we can work on it so I'd say understand that first. Once you understand that within yourself, as a wazu to relax. Wazu to okay, now what do I need? I need studio gear. Okay, studio gear, the most basic of setup can can put you on. Definitely need a computer. And you definitely need some sort of music software so that you're able to record. You know, there's lots of names going around. Ask people who are around you. Wazu wazu such a step. You know? Could you name a few? Uh, I use Logic Pro X. I feel like I'm a guru of Logic because I've used it for so long, so I know my way around now. You know. Um, I also have uh, FL Studio, uh, famously known as Fruity Loops. But I'm a passionate Logic user. You know, I, I know my way around so much that I'm not even gonna. Uh, want to learn something new at this point, you know, Cubase, Studio One, Reason, there's quite a few that you can use, you know, and then you need some sort of uh, sound card to communicate between your MIDI controller, this is a MIDI controller, uh, 
from your MIDI controller to be able to record the stuff onto your, your software. So you need a sound card, you know. Yeah. You can get the smallest of sound cards, uh, two channels, you know. As long as you're able to communicate between your MIDI controller and your computer, sometimes your little mic into your computer, you will need that. I'm a monitor. You definitely need monitors at some point in your career, but me now I still use headphones. Mm. I've got big monitors here, but I still like to put on my headphones. Let's talk about the brand of headphones you mm. use and why. Uh, what makes them jump out at you? Uh, look, it's really like a choice. Uh, you use a few things until you're happy, mm -hmm. you know. I have these ones that I use, the Sennheisers. You know, what I like about these Sennheisers is that they they have a quite a low frequency response, so they can go down to like 20 and, you know, all the way to, to bass frequencies, you know. And I think it's important when you're doing production and doing mixing to understand where everything is sitting. You know, sometimes, like if you're using these five inch speakers, they can't go as low as you know like really sub frequencies so you end up making mixing mistakes where because it pays away is as a news can't I use a mobile speaker on the side you know if you had something that monitored the bass frequencies in your ears you'd hear that echo you don't have to hear them here but you'll definitely find them you know so that's why i like these uh, sennheisers in particular uh, but i would recommend having different sets of monitors so that you can listen in different environments yeah, well, you need to know what it sounds like on laptop speakers what it sounds like on phones because that's where people that's generally where, listen exactly, to exactly that's where most from. people listen to music you know you have to understand uh, the system in the club which is also a different game altogether for example a uh, club or rather outdoor systems like now and konabanik they don't connect me uh, systems in stereo they connect everything in mono mm. for basic reasons if things were in stereo left and right if minangise club pini give me on one side and you've panned things to my side because also but if you pan them to the other side, I wouldn't hear them because I'm away from the speaker. Yeah. So to eliminate that, to mono connecting everything in mono, you know, so that no matter how in the house or in the room or in the stadium or in the club, you all hear in the same thing. So it means me as a producer now, I have to consider that. So I mustn't be too excited about panning and moving things left and right because it's not going to translate once I get into the club. So I keep things really tight, you know. So those are all the things that you learn with time. Sure. Okay, cool. So we've spoken headphones, we've spoken a MIDI controller, we've spoken a decent computer, we've spoken software sound and, and a sound card. All right, cool. So from then on, we've ascertained what's it called italian deliver one absolutely besides the passion absolutely. right how much does the talent count for let's say a junior level okay mm. you figured these things out what then do i need in order to be able to cut through okay well talent talent everything works in stages so for me to be able to make a record with you, I have to actually establish that you are talented. You have uh, some sort of talent that can be worked with. Mm -hmm. Obviously, talent can be nurtured over time, sure. which is what we all do. Even if you're 50, there's still something that you learn because talent is nurtured over time, you know. And then from that talent, then you also have to acquire a sort of business acumen. You know, mm -hmm. just being able to say, okay, now I have a really good record that I've produced. I'm talented and I've sang over it, I've made the beat. How do I then make this beat create a name for me? Yeah, well, so those are things that you now get into that are important. They actually go parallel. You can't say, okay, I'm going to do the one, then I'm going to do the other one. They need to go in parallel. Okay, I'm making music, I'm creating like really, really nice sounds, but then I need to put them out. Lucky for us now, we're in the days of social media. So there's SoundCloud. There's a lot of things where you can actually put your music out for people to hear. Mm -hmm. Lucky for uh, platforms like SoundCloud, if you're skeptical about people having your stuff without your permission, you can let them just preview it so they can listen if they can't download it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, so those are ways to do it. Personally, I recommend every now and then 
give it to them for free because you want your name to be out there. And also it's word of mouth. If I hear something that I really like, I'm going to tell someone else about it. So word of mouth is very important. We live in a digital age and we must take advantage of the digital age. So I very much encourage people who are talented we go to talent like a son in the business acumen, but in our corner everything is learned over time. Mm -hmm. So relax, so you use my rights, but understand that they need to work together. And while Ngalang is a founder, is a release music, is a produce music, I'm also learning okay, what is a copyright? Uh, I produce the music, how much percentage? You know, in our corner, the percentage do I get it of performing? Uh, royalties to get it off mechanical royalties you know like where is my money coming from who is my money going to before it gets to me all of those things go parallel and with Delibut and growing up as young musicians take it very seriously at an early stage we educate yeah to teach yourself i mean we have uh, smartphones now we're always on, on whatsapp and you know so i say make it 50 50 chat 50 percent of the time use the other 50 percent to learn about your craft cool let's talk about the importance of the sound engineer mm. for production let's talk about your sound engineering mm. levels okay I'm, I'm i'm pretty sure if my memory serves me well there was and was it an acoustics class um a uk or was there it was there was an acoustics class yeah. but i was never part of that class i mean i did my studies uh, outside of UKZN, okay. you know, through Berkeley and Sweden, America, those sort of things. Mm. But it was for myself, mm. you know, my own money, uh, being able to just say, this is what I want to learn, you know. Mm. And now, corner foot, you can learn the technical things. Mm. You can learn about frequency, you can learn about response, you can learn about the room, you can learn about monitors. The reality ET, you have to put it to practice. Mm. and it will happen over time like i listen to my productions from two years ago and i'm like oh what was i doing mm. you know mm. but it's a good lesson because now i understand things a whole lot differently mm. yeah well i understand this room more than anyone in this building mm. i understand that this room because there's a door there this space trap was not able to get into there because we wouldn't be able to get out mm. and for that reason bass packs up in that corner mm. so i can be sitting here and hear no bass and then go there and it's like whoa mm. yeah well so that's that's a lesson of understanding the room so now every now and then i'll do something here then i'll get up and i'll stand and i'm like yo that's a lot but because i'm here well, that's okay let's post it because you are basically killing the mix mm. yeah well but it needed me to be in this room for a while it wasn't something like technical. No, I needed to be here and understand that you can get a bit much. Guess we're kicking at it, man. What's in the new seven man? Must be far more than you see. Why? Because the room says from directly in front of the speakers, you're not going to hear as much as you were if you were slightly away from it mm. or sort of standing at the back or, you know, because low frequencies go down. Mm. That's why subs are sitting on the floor. And the mids are sitting on the top, and the mids and the top are sitting on the top. So mostly directly in front, you're not giving it enough time for it to sink and to travel and to bounce back off the walls and everything like mm. that. Yeah. So those are the things that I've learned as an engineer. Time is important. Time helps you learn a lot of things when we found it off the book. Mm. I think in closing, um, just the importance of collaborating with a banya band who are and not hugging is it but not mm. not being afraid of, of, of sharing ideas and and how do you choose a band who won't steal from you because mm. um that we've heard um, you know they'll call it inspiration mm. we know what we call it how how do you choose a band that you collaborate with and 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 how important is it to collaborate Okay, there's two kinds of collaborations. There's collaborations with an established artist, a big brand, uh, in the hope that that brand will empower your brand. And then there's a collaboration of an upcoming artist whom your brand will inspire their brand. 
you know so Nam is sitting here in the middle I make that sort of choice which okay now I feel like collaborating with an established artist I feel like I can learn from this artist I feel like my brand can be elevated by being associated with this artist and half the time it's hard to get even that collaboration you have to keep trying and keep trying and keep trying but what I've learned also is that in me trying to work with those artists it gave me an opportunity to enhance my craft for them to one day say yo I heard something that you did it's really nice can we meet up and I'm like yeah but I've been trying to get in contact with you but it just wasn't the time you know so I needed to get to a point and then with the upcoming artists uh, you made that conscious decision as well Luti. okay I'm releasing uh, I'm working on an EP right now okay that's gonna be my next drop six tracks or seven max and I want to have like one unknown or two unknown uh, vocalists and then maybe one unknown beat maker because I'm, I'm making a mix between instrumentals and uh, vocal tracks so in the vocal section of the album I want to have one or two people that abang you and then Ngala Futika instrumental have one person on that because the instrumentals are going to be less, maybe three instrumentals. So that's a choice. So how do I choose? It's a conscious decision I've made up front already that I want to have. It. So now find, excuse me, finding the people, that's a different game altogether, you know. Lucky for me, I work for entertainment and we get we get music all the time like people want in people want to be listened to people want collaborations all of those things so there's plenty to choose from and i can tell you now there's going to be some really fun surprises mm. about the project showcase thanks for giving us your time brother hey man